हरिओम हरिओम हरिओ हेलो माय फ्रेंड्स strange times still strange time it seems it will continue i hear from friends in europe it's getting tighter it's about to get worse well well just stay with the light we here be now connect with the light with the beauty no matter what is happening in this way we can contribute that it passes faster it will pass will go away all this madness all this control business will fall to pieces just each one has to somehow manage to find a way through all this when i hear what in certain places is happening and we hear it don't hear it on the official news they won't talk about many things that are happening then it saddens my heart but still i'm totally confident all this will pass just connect with yourself connect with the essence connect with the nature look at nature no matter how mad people behave nature is still beautiful until things change we just have to find our way through the whole mess be as happy as cheerful as we can that makes your own situation easier lighter and it helps others if we radiate some beauty if we radiate joyousness it helps people who are having the tendency to be very worried and depressed to lighten up also yeah. it's not for nothing that this is happening like an individual in the development sometimes has to go through difficult phases in order to shake up the old status quo in order to shake up the fixed concepts and hang-ups one has sometimes one has to go to stormy periods then the readiness comes to let go and open up for something broader something more beautiful and like for the individual it seems to be such a period for humanity and as we are so stubborn in holding on to our old base in spite of having been destructive i mean all our technology 
everything has been directing more and more to a big catastrophe. And we are holding on to our personal little comforts without thinking about the whole, about that we are members of a connect collective. Somehow it seems that humanity as a whole has to be shaken up severely <laughs> to be ready to change, to open up to something more harmonious, more joyous, more lightful, more beautiful. We're going in that direction, even if it doesn't look like at times, even if it seems that the situation of humanity is getting worse and worse. Still, you are going in a direct in the direction of something very beautiful. You just have to stick it out. Have the patient patience to stick it out. All this that is happening is not in vain. It's not for nothing. So let's go about it as cheerful, as harmonious, as strong, as self-confident as we can. Now I come to a question, Ilana from Israel has asked me, but who is the doer? And she asked that in a context that she had to make a decision. And after deciding, wondering, was it the right decision? Was it the wrong decision? Could I really decide or was it just fate that is anyhow doing what has to be done? <laughs> who is the doer? That's the price question. And actually, there will never be a final answer to that question. Everything is that essential cosmic energy, conscious energy. Consciousness is doing it, energy is doing it, the love for, of existence is doing it. And yet, in the play of this manifested reality, it's also part of the divine will that individuals have their own creativity, have, can bring in their own creativity. So there is a certain range as an individual one can decide, one can make choices. Still, that cosmic intent will be there, that somehow this always will be woven into a cosmic tapestry. And so we may make choices, but it may not work out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <coughs> Without that essential beingness, with its three aspects of consciousness, energy and love, nothing can happen. So everything is done by that. Then in manifestation, the individuals bring in their own creativity. The more an individual is fixed on, I am this little body, I am this little mind, I am this little person separate from everything else, the smaller that range is. The more one detaches from that and connects with the essence, the larger that creative freedom is there. Because automatically, the more we are identified with that, the more we will work in harmony 
And that's like a divine safety guard that as long as there is just selfishness, selfishness, the freedom to make choices is very limited, has very little effect. The more one is in harmony with the divinity, the larger that freedom gets. I like Sri Ramakrishna's image about it. He says, well, we are like, <laughs> like the cows of a farmer <laughs> who brings the cows out into the meadow but plants poles for every cow and then ties the cow with a rope to that pole within the circle of the, with the within the length of the rope. The cow has the freedom to move in whatever it wants, but it's a given limit. <laughs> And I would add, the more we are self-conscious, not ego-conscious, the more we are self-conscious, the longer that line becomes. Now, if somebody take, makes a choice, and then after that the thoughts come, is it the right choice? Is it the wrong choice? Have I done it? If I not done it, don't unnecessarily wreck your brains like this. A choice is made, so then go for it. Go for it full hearted. And even if later you become aware, oh, it was maybe a foolish choice. <laughs> so what? Somehow it had to happen. Maybe we needed a foolish situation to learn something, to broaden our experience, to broaden our consciousness. If we are standing before a choice, uh, if a choice is there and we cannot decide, if it is not necessary at that moment to really decide, then we can just uh, accept, okay, I just put it away and let it hang choose not to choose right now and they often things are crystallizing out all by themselves if the moment comes a choice has to be made then if it's not clear listen to your gut feeling listen to your intuition if deep down you feel it's going this way and not that way, then follow it. But sometimes you may not feel it. If the mind is too active, then it will cover up that basic knowledge that is there in everybody, which way to go best. But when the mind is too active, then it's covered up and we may not have access so easily. If that is the case and you have to choose, then simply do that which makes the most amount of sense. <laughs> do the simplest, just the simplest solution and go for it. And once you have decided, then really go for it and don't waste your energy thinking, is it the right, maybe I should have done the other thing, because this all comes out of fear that me, I as an individual could make a mistake. Don't be afraid of making mistakes. Those so-called mistakes are not really mistakes. If we are alert, we learn from it. So they are learning pieces. The only thing I call really a mistake that if we repeat certain things again and again and know perfectly well, 
It's leading us to suffering. It's creating pain for ourselves and for others. And in spite of that, we do it that they could call a mistake. But otherwise, those so-called mistakes, they were just things that had to happen. Somehow we have learned, we grow wiser in course of the process, if we are alert. If you are not alert, we may have to repeat the things a few times until we get it. But if that alertness is there, then we learn from it. And know that in a future situation, similar situation, I wouldn't make the same choice. <laughs> now, how much we can at all influence? As I said before, it is not something fixed. You cannot say it's like this, it's like that. Like there are all these teachings. Some say you have total freedom to choose. You can choose in every moment. It's all in your hands. You can decide everything in your life and all depends you. And then there is the opposite that says you have absolutely no freedom, everything is fixed, everything is preordained, and you cannot change a damn thing about it. And both extremes are not completely wrong, but they are not right, because you cannot make such statements which is applicable in all the situations. This is a dynamic living process. It comes out of this timelessness. <laughs> and we have that possibility to be creative in it. That's the point that we are all, at all coming into this projecting our part of our real self into this magic show of a world that forms a person that mistakes itself to be a separate individual, but actually it's a projection of yourself. And yet that projection, that individual is being given a certain creativity within limits, but still it's there. So then what are we going to do practical with all that? And the simple rule how to go about it is act as if you had freedom to act. Act as if you had a choice. Choose wisely, spontaneously, intuitively. But then you can accept that it doesn't lie within your hands, hands, whether you are successful in what you are attempting, in your choices, accept it as God's will, what comes out of it. You choose, you act as if you had the full freedom, even if there are powers there that pushes left and right, but that Attitude keeps that creativity alive, that spark from moment to moment. But at the same time, have the attitude, the result of it is God's will. Sometimes I'm successful, sometimes I'm not. Sometimes I'm making a fool out of myself in front of others. So what? Sometimes I. And being praised, what does it matter? It's a situation that comes and goes. If you are alert, you can learn from everything and broaden our perspective and broaden our experience, expand our consciousness, no matter what is happening. Let's not be afraid of mistake. Let's not go through our life always wondering, am I doing the right thing? Am I doing the wrong thing? <laughs> Is it right? Is it wrong? Is it right? Just don't be intentionally foolish. 
and then go about it playfully. Even if we are making blunders sometimes, so what? <laughs> then we deal with the consequences and we go ahead. Okay, Ilara, <laughs> I've quite extensively talked about it because it's a question that comes to everybody again and again. It's an old question. It touches the question, do we have free will or no free will? And as long as there have been philosophers around, it has been discussed <laughs> left and right. And as I said, there is no final answer. We just have to playfully deal with this magic situation that has too many aspects involved as if we could be uh, teaching and say that's how it is. <laughs> okay, now I'm inviting you. My friends, if there is anybody who would like to talk, you are welcome to come in. seems not to be the case. <laughs> you want me to continue crumbling away all by myself. <laughs> I can tell you about the situation. It's still raining. It seems that this year it's making up for all the years where we had not enough water, but in the hot season, everything was getting brown. The farmers couldn't plant anything. Now it's going on and on. Then in between, it seems that the lakes are receding again, and then it comes again, still. And previous I had said to you, and see, yeah, here we are lucky because we don't have floods. And that's true. We are lucky in that. I said it's just an inconvenience. Yes, for most, for most of us, it's just an inconvenience. But for the farmers, it's not so easy now with too much rain, with too much water. It has also their pets are getting sick. There are cows that are dying. Just in the neighborhood, we had two cows that died just because they are getting sick in this climate. Of It's not really cold and very, very wet. And so if that goes on and on, and it's going on and on now since two months, the animals have the tendency to get sick. And of course, it's a great loss for them. I see how they struggle, I see how they work, and time and again they face difficulties like this, that one thing happens, another thing happens, that hurts them, like their, when they like their house, and when they die, of course, it hurts them. And it's financially always a difficult situation for them when such things happen. So now, whereas in other times we had always been praying that some rain is coming, now <laughs> people are praying that it should stop now. We have had it out for the time being. Thank you very much. <laughs> Come later again when it's necessary. 
But then, there we don't have any choice. <laughs> All right, I've been a bit in a lighter way. Is there anybody who would like to talk? Please come in. How many are here? 24 people. Yes. Hi. Hello. Uh, Anita. Yes, yes. Hello. Hello. Um, I was listening to a, a Yetz TV interview. Yeah. And there was this question about uh, uh, what you, as one sentence, what you would give that is most important or something like that. I don't quite remember and uh, you say they are to be i think you say to be authentic yes and honest and uh, yeah can you say more to that and um, because sometimes i'm not sure if, you know how to distinguish a ah. minor yeah right when i say when i encourage people to be authentic then I mean that they live their life as they feel is right, instead of always wondering what are people thinking if I'm behaving like this, if I'm behaving like that, and then uh, handicapping their own creativity, their own beauty by being concerned about what feedback comes from the others. Being afraid that uh, if I'm behaving in this way, then maybe some people may not like it. <laughs> we can go afraid like this through our life and always cripple our own creativity. And anyhow, no matter what we are doing, there are always some people who like it and some people who don't like it. <laughs> we cannot do anything and everybody likes it. <clears throat> I mean it within the limit that, that we don't become destructive. If I'm not meaning that uh, any destructive whim that goes through the mind, we should manifest and go out and uh, create trouble for others and for ourselves. But people have often deep down an idea what they would like to do, but then they think anyhow I'm not good enough or anyhow I'm already in this situation. It's too dangerous to not <laughs> do my habitual thing or afraid that if they change some external ways how they behave, how they, what they are doing, how they spend their time, that people who were close may not like it and then they lose their friendship. And I can only tell to those people, if you can so easily lose their friendship, then don't worry about it, good riddance. <laughs> it was not worth to worry about it. <laughs> don't, don't let your beauty and creativity be crippled by being afraid of what kind of feedback we are getting from the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, for me, it's more that I'm, I, I'm aware I, that I, um, I focus too much on the outside, on the other people, mm -hmm. and somehow I want to please them. Yes. And so I forget... I, I'm, I'm not in touch with my, mm. you know, whatever, whatever it would be. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, and then there is always that nagging feeling that uh, something uh, somewhere is not quite right. <laughs> if, we, if we do that. That uh, basically 
you would rather behave differently, but because of wanting to please people. Mm -hmm. It's still the same. Uh, we want to please people because we want their feedback. We want their appreciation. We want their affection. We want uh, the support of a positive feedback from them. So that's why we want to please them, not why, because we think uh, they are happier if we please them. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's nice to be nice to people, of course, by all means, whenever it's possible. But if they can only feel that uh, it's nice what comes through us, from us if we are not true to ourselves, then it's better that we learn to be true to ourselves and take it in our stride that maybe some people who used to be pleased with us may not more be pleased. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just trying to find a way to, to more get in contact with my yeah, with myself or where I feel then what is good for me or what I want. Yes. And I guess what you always say is this center breathe, relax is of course one thing I I do quite often, which helps also. Helps a lot. Yeah. It puts you in touch with yourself here now. Right. And in that relaxing in the present, it bubbles up all by itself. What, mm. what direction we are going, what we have to do or not to do. But many times it's also good just not to do anything. And just be, consciously be, without, mm. to be creative. When I talk to be about being creative, then I'm not meaning we have to be active necessarily. We can mm. express that creativity in actions in any way we want, but often the most creative thing is not to do anything, just to be consciously here now. <laughs> yeah, but if I'm consciously here now and the other people are active and doing their thing, I, I put my attention out there again. Yeah. So, and I lose, I lose it again. I don't know. Well, yeah. yeah. And then you, when you become aware that you're doing it, then you simply bring it back again. <laughs> 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 that's, that's the job. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, yes. Yes. It, it's there, stays for a moment, maybe for a period, whoop, goes again. And then you simply bring the attention back again. And even if you are active, that you learn more and more to be in conscious touch with that presence, with that simple beingness even when active. And if people around are running and hyperactive, then let them do so. Sometimes the attention out of habit is sucked in and brrr, we go along. But then when you become aware of it, never mind, there, there you are, but you are becoming aware of it and you simply bring it back again. That's the job. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, and the other thing was, <clears throat> I liked it also in the interview when you said uh, to die every moment, which you say is like letting go of whatever is there. I think that's a nice idea. Because in that moment when I do that, I'm really here again. Yes. Uh, right. Uh, and I said that in the context we were talking about the physical death. And after all, it's just a letting go of that uh, body ID that we have. And mm. uh, getting out of this theater, <laughs> letting go of whatever has been connected there. 
And so if we learn to live by letting go of what is past, not trying to forget, but not more emotionally being hooked into what is gone, then it's like a little death every moment. And if we learn to die every moment, then we really are alive. Because then every, <laughs> every moment you are again new and fresh and beautiful. <laughs> and then how, <clears throat> sorry, how did you, uh, because you said you have no, absolutely no fear about, uh, for, uh, how do you say, no fear of death. Uh, how did you overcome that or how can one, because I, I, I believe that this is uh, the biggest fear and if one is able to overcome this, then must be much more joyous and easy the life. So how to overcome the fear of death? Mm. It hasn't been a big, big subject for me, but of course it was there. But it disappeared when I became aware that this world is not as real as it appears. It's a, it's a wonderful place to gain experience, to expand, to learn, to expand, to expand consciousness, to expand the experience. But it's not as real as it appears to be. And we don't have to take it so serious as we are having the tendency to take it. And when that became clear, then automatically the idea of a physical death also didn't make sense anymore. It's more mm -hmm. like, okay, now I'm playing in this theater, eventually the curtain falls. It's like you don't expect an actor on stage that he's afraid of the moment when the curtain falls. No, it's just the act is over, then uh, he's going about other business. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's not something you have to do uh, and then eventually you're completely free of it, but it's good when fear comes to confront it and work with it and learn to detach from it. But that it finally disappears comes automatically with the experience, with the unshakable knowledge that, hey, come on, this, this mirage of a world, <laughs> this Fata Morgana, we take it as a reality and it has a momentary reality as an appearance, as a field where we can experience. And for that, it deserves to get uh, uh, its own attention, but it's not as real as it is, comparable to a dream in the night. And in the, the night dream, when we are completely immersed in the dream, everything is real, real, real in the dream and very frightening often. <laughs> can be joyous, very joyous, but it can be very frightening. But when you become aware in the dream that it is a dream, it stops being frightening. And when you are aware in the dream that it is a dream, then you are not afraid of the moment when the dream stops, it comes automatically. <laughs> and this is like becoming aware in this long drawn out waking dream of this world, of this human life. Hey, it's not as real as it appears. <laughs> then you're also not afraid of the moment when the whole story is over. Mm -hmm. I, I find it really very challenging to to be aware of that this is a theater. I, I mean, I am, I can do that, but not at the same time play the game. You know, mm -hmm. that's, <laughs> is there some, <laughs> some tool? 
<laughs> how right. to manage this both at the same time. <laughs> right. As soon as you get actively involved in the role of the theater, you forget it's a theater. <laughs> Yeah. Right, out of old habit, this will invariably happen, but when you become aware, in the midst of action, the moment you become aware, you bring your attention really to the present and let go. Become relax, no matter the situation. You may stay only a very short moment, but that short moment is very precious. And if we do that again and again, it slowly builds up its own power, its own momentum, that gradually it becomes easier and eventually it's just happening naturally. But can it not out of, I don't know what, uh, of law, of, of everything, can it not be only that either I'm identified or I'm aware? Not both. I cannot play and be aware, or can I? Of course you can. <laughs> yeah, you, you somehow, can. a bit, I think, a bit, right. yes. You may not always be conscious. <clears throat> After all, you never anywhere else, but in that timeless here now. We simply think we are estranged of it. And then uh, we have been thinking like this without questioning for a long time that it seems to be a solid reality. But when you start to question it, and every now and then in your activities, a moment you stop and you just center and breathe and relax and you are here. Now, then you become aware, ah, hey, I was again completely involved, but actually I never left the here now. And then you can smoothly go into the action again and bring that attitude into the action. Maybe only a short moment and then the forgetting comes again. But then that short moment is already very precious. It's just when you remember to connect and to come back to that perspective that this is not so serious, it's not so totally real, then don't cut it off. Don't handicap yourself by thinking, oh, anyhow, I'm never getting there. Or anyhow, I can't. Anyhow, it's too difficult for me. Anyhow, then when you remember, consequently that moment, you just do it. If you do that consequently, then gradually we lose the fear that we may have of doing so, to be conscious and still active. You do it consciously, you train yourself consciously in easy situations, and then gradually you can also in more complicated, more <laughs> difficult situations, the memory also comes back. And the moment the memory comes, not thinking, oh, I wait until this is over and then I try again, but right then and there, there you are, whatever you are doing, with whomever you are. That moment you just consciously bring the attention back to that aspect of you who has never been really touched by all this. It's not that that mm. aspect is absent, we just lose the awareness of it. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's good. good. I, I will listen to it again. No, it's, uh, I mean, I come back to this that uh, if I see it's, it's all a dream, I. I start thinking about what it means because I would think about, well, then it's not important. Then I don't have to take care of, of my friends or whoever and, and I don't have to be worried if, if they're sick or 
you know, right now many friends of mine have COVID, including myself. Yeah. And uh, some are really, some are really in a very bad shape, and I'm worried. But um, yeah. Yeah. What uh, if? If I, I have the feeling I have to take it serious in, in the way I cannot say, well, it's, it's just a theater, or, or I don't know. Right. Uh, yeah. 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 As good it's, as uh, you can. Yeah. I mean, your worries about your friends are not helping them one little bit. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I'm not like uh, afraid or this. I, I'm, I say worried that, that I. I try to help and, and, and give That's them fine. suggestions what, what to do. Yeah. And you yeah. you know what you do to do with yourself. Yeah, could you, yeah, yeah. Could I, you get your hands on Ivermectin? Actually I could get one, but I, I have the feeling I don't need it. I'm my fever is gone now and yeah, I'm yeah. pretty okay. I'm doing inhalation and yeah. So I mean, ivermectin is very harmless. Yeah. Can, can very well take it uh, or encourage your friends to take it if, yeah. at all, if at all they can get it. It's a really yeah, serious yeah, cases, they get quickly better. If that is not available, mm. you can also... Pineapple essence has a very sim similar effect. Ananas, oh, really? ananas okay, essence, pineapple, pineapple essence, okay. ananas essence. Uh, it's amazing. It has a very similar effect like ivermectin. Oh. Yeah. All right. Oh, good. Good suggestion. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. <laughs> Just by the way, a little <laughs> medical <laughs> advice. But yeah, nice. you can do all that with yourself and with your friends and still sort of keep a light mood instead of thinking, oh, it's a big tragedy. Yeah, yeah, sure. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much. You are welcome. I wish you well, a quick recovery. Thank you. Okay. Adios, adios. Adios. Adio. Is there anybody Hello. else who would like to come? Yes, I hear a voice. No. Oh, so, Alina. Ah, uh, hello, Ilona. Hello. Yeah, hi. So, Liora. No, actually, Liora. I'm... Not Ilona. Yeah, <laughs> Liora. Yeah. Yes, yes. So what you spoke now with Anita, I also was going this week with a question about um, when you say to die at every moment. Yes. I was wondering how do you actually do it? So you just uh, mentioned the letting go. And I really felt how it is actually in the body when, you know, what it, if I do with my hand like that, and yeah. all the time, so, yeah. so how can I do it with all the um, theories and, and opinions and whatever goes, maybe here, I don't know where it goes, but it's easy to let go of uh, sand or, you know, right. stone. And then I thought, you know, the image I had was like, like walking on ice. <laughs> a walking a uh, uh, tight rope, they say, um, walking a tight, tight rope. Um, so walking in ice and trying not to break the ice. <laughs> <laughs> because I, I, I listened to the questions that Anita had asked them and to the answers. So all the time there's the, there's all the time the ice can break. All the time <laughs> the ice to, can break. Want, <laughs> yeah, because we want to keep <coughs> on going and we, we, we want to move on. At the same time, there's so many things we feel we have to be 
careful about. <laughs> mm-hmm. So one of my patients said, I told him this and he said, yeah, but then we also want the ice to break. So sometimes we just like, so and the ice breaks and everything falls apart. Yeah. We, we center ourselves again, and this can happen actually every day, all the time. We get up in the morning, I get up in the morning, I feel good, and I do what I do, and I'm happy, and then something happens, and I, my mood, my energy goes down, and I'm mm. or depressed, or I don't know, whatever, I despair in despair, and then... Uh, so I just let go there. I said, okay, but you know that this might happen to you. And then, you know, this is like the ice breaks and then I move back. And this week I felt it, it's difficult. It's, it's, um, I mean, you know, I'm fine, but it's, it's a challenge. It's absolutely a challenge all the time. They think about me, what they don't, what they do, so that, Today I spoke with my ex-husband and his mother is almost 90, no way, and she's very sick. She's actually probably dying soon. She has a brain tumor. So we spoke and he didn't know whether he should already go now or whether he should wait until she's about to die. And I told him, listen, every decision that you take might you might have to change it because things are happening with her all the time now. Mm. Um, because she's in such a delicate, situ- fragile situation. So it was, it was a good conversation. How do we take a decision? How like to? that, for instance. How to take a decision? Ah, which is yes. Yeah, yeah. So serious. Yeah. Um, no, I'm just saying I don't even have a question here. I'm just saying that it, sometimes it feels very difficult, very challenging. Right. It may look difficult because we have for a long time never really been living like this. And then when we start, it looks difficult. To, because of all the habit that we always thought, I have to worry. And I have to feel be in tension, and I have to <laughs> feel concerned. I mean, being concerned can be something very positive if we are not getting emotionally sucked into darkness. But uh, just uh, thinking of other people, how we can help them, what we should do for them, that's perfectly fine without getting emotionally hooked that it pulls us into a, a hole. And of course, uh, it, you are totally right, life is a challenge. That's what we are here for. And we are being challenged all the time. And once you become more aware, you become also more aware how there are challenges all the time that wants to pull us away from that what we want. As long as we are half asleep, we are not even aware that there are challenges. The moment we feel a bit fine, and then the moment we feel a bit down, and then <laughs> but once you are more aware, you become aware of it. The whole story is a continuous challenge again and again and again. But if we stop resisting that it is like this, then we can go about it playfully and accept the challenges, knowing they are not for nothing. It's not like a cosmic mistake that we are here. (laughs) We are here because we want to be here. That aspect which projects into this world wants to be here in order to have the benefit of the experience, the wealth of the experience. And if we are looking more at life from that perspective, then the challenges are still there. They don't go away. But you are not resisting and think, oh, no, not again, another challenge. But okay, there, there it comes. We go through it playfully, cheerfully, knowing we go 
through it for a purpose, to learn, to grow, to expand, and come out of it richer. Yeah. I need to hear that all the time. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shall we leave it at that for today? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank okay, you. you're welcome, Mario. Mario. <laughs> Is there anybody else who would like to come in? You're welcome to come. Hello, Werner. Oh, hello, Nelly. Oh, one moment, I forgot to put on my earphones. Uh -huh. But uh, can, yeah. hear you? can you hear me? Yes, I hear you very good. Yeah, then uh, never mind the earphones. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah, I wanted to say that uh, it's uh, very helpful for me for your uh, reminds uh, about basics. Yeah, uh, like you said uh, last satsangs that we should master the basics. This is the main thing. Uh, yeah, and some days ago I... I felt uh, that I, uh, I felt a little of what you mean, uh, the magic of this uh, uh, conscious breath. Mm. Yeah, I felt uh, a lot of worries in my head, as, as usually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, <laughs> yeah, and um, one moment once I. Um, Everything was okay, and I felt so much relaxed in my uh, inside that everything, all all circumstances were good, and I felt yeah, it's so fine. But in a moment, uh, a new new thoughts came in my mind, and I already stick to them, mm. and uh, I felt one again that. Uh, my happiness can't be depend of um, outside things. Yeah, it can't be because it always, everything changes all the time. And uh, I began more conscious, uh, um, follow my breath. And I, I said to myself that I should stick to my breath, not go after these thoughts, so they never, uh, never finish. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And I tried to stick to my breath, and and it was uh, success. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Very I really good. felt this. Yeah. I felt this uh, um, this grounded and strength and uh, something like stick inside me. So uh, more clear than this time, it was clear, yeah. Mm. And I, I thought that, yeah, it's really magic, yeah. <laughs> Just to, <laughs> because this is like uh, something that really makes me safe. Uh, this inner, uh, inner uh, stability, yeah. Yeah. Right. You become aware that yeah. that of you which matters cannot really be heard. Yeah. And all other things, they, uh, all thoughts and worries, they uh, a little go back and mm. like I have some distance from them, don't involve too much. Right. Yeah. Right. Yes, it it changes a lot. This the feelings, inner feelings, it changes too much. Yeah, it is a very <laughs> very pleasant feeling. It uh, it it's not. It doesn't work always like this because sometimes it is more difficult to 
uh, to follow the breath, to be so conscious. Yes, but it's pleasant that sometimes it happens. Yes, that's nice. Encouraging, and, huh? <laughs> yes, <laughs> I see that. <laughs> yes, it's courage so much, and I see that it really works. Sorry, mm -hmm. there were just a few mm -hmm. ants running up my leg, biting. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> I see. <laughs> yeah. um. Did you want to ask something about or just share with us? I, I want to say something else because yesterday I, I felt some fear. You know that uh, now a cat lives near us. And, yeah, uh, Dial talked told, about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yes. <laughs> and uh, Dial uh, made a house for the cat near our house, yeah. outside. I yeah. see. <laughs> yeah, and uh, yesterday uh, another warlike cat came to, to the to our area yeah yeah and he attacked our cat and yeah um, that cat is well is very dangerous because other neighbors say that he bited their cats and very 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 bad yeah yeah and i saw that uh, our cat was very afraid and um, how to say i made that uh, wall like cat, cat went away uh, immediately yeah yeah uh, but our cat is very frightened and it seems to me that he's still in a stress yeah. yeah yeah and and i felt some fear in myself and i still it uh, i feel uh, this because of this situation it, it, it's like a trigger uh, showed my fear yeah, yeah. And it yeah. Came um, came up that something dangerous can happen and uh, and I know that I can't always uh, be near and uh, help cat yeah and uh, um, I just feel this um, fear inside and try to relax to 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 become yeah yeah. To make myself calm to breath but just some tremble inside i feel yes yeah. because uh, yeah yeah it, it just shows me this my my emotions because i um, sometimes i feel like this because of uh, any other situations yeah just i work with it <laughs> yeah right I mean, it's just symbolic for the fear of danger, what you are yeah. describing now, uh, it, whether it's for your cat or whether it's for yourself or for yeah. uh, any other uh, close beings, human or not human. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And you can in a situation where there is danger or where there is potential danger, then you can do what needs to be done. What you can do to maybe protect from the danger, but that doesn't mean that we have to be worried about, because that worry is uh, not helping you, not helping the other being. It's just wasting energy. So when you catch yourself worrying, then uh, you do what you have been doing, that uh, you objectify, you s step out of it. It's We fear it's the same like with the other situations, that you learn not to take it so serious. Then, okay, the emotion fear is there, but then when you take a distance, then you see, after all, it's not necessarily justified most of the time that we are having that fear, <laughs> that we are keeping up that fear. And even if the a situation is very dangerous, life-threatening, then 
when you are capable of not indulging in due fear. I mean, for a moment, fear will come in the dangerous situations. The, but then, if we are not nourishing it and holding on to it and make it bigger and bigger, then it comes. It gives like an alert signal, which sometimes is very necessary. But then, uh, if we are not hooking into it, then it fades away again. And if it doesn't fade, then uh, you can start to consciously just observe what it is doing and consciously relax and do what you said that sometimes is happening uh, in your life with other situations than fear that uh, you suddenly observe them without being emotionally hooked into it and it feels so totally different. Then. Yeah. Fear is also part of that dreamlike experience, <laughs> like the other things also. Simply, uh -huh. some aspects are easier to deal with than other aspects, and fear is a tough one. <laughs> At least so it seems, until we accept that fear, after all, is not such a terrible thing. If we just treat it as an emotion, then, aha, uh -huh, there is fear, it comes, it's there for a moment, it goes. We have to lose the fear of the fear, <laughs> not be afraid of the fear. And then when the fear comes, oh uh, yeah, then the fear comes, it's there for a moment and goes away again. <laughs> Yeah, thank you very much. For, and for your remind to uh, that it wastes the time when we think, worry about something that can't help. Yes, really, mm. it can't help. Yeah, it's a good remind. It it uh, uses up our vital force for nothing useful if we are worrying. It's around the globe, uh, everybody worries about so many things, and so it's the most natural thing to follow that stream and worry about so many things. But once you become conscious and become aware, then you can work on it because you become aware that worrying is just a waste of energy. That doesn't mean we have to become locked in and blind and not see anything what is happening. But we can see, and we can see difficult situations without starting to worry and think, oh my God, oh my God, what can I do more my day? <laughs> what is going to happen? But just as, assess the situation and see whether we have a role to play in it. And if yes, then we play it. And if we don't have, then we can just send positive feelings, positive energy to support, but uh, accept, okay, it, it's not in my hands, I don't have a role to play. And certainly not to worry. <laughs> yes, yes, that's, that's right. Yeah. And uh, uh, recently I I felt one, one, one thing in my meditation, I was, I was sitting and uh, felt some relaxation, but not in my, in my body, but in some parts I felt relaxed and some parts not. And I, and I thought how strange and amazing it is if I just sit doing noth nothing, doing no efforts and I feel this. <laughs> I, I, I thought it is, it is amazing how uh, could I accumulate all these things if I just <laughs> because it's so natural just to, if I just sit I should be naturally relaxed right <laughs> but why this net tension <laughs> why should they be here <laughs> it was so funny yeah <laughs> yeah yeah it's just habit huh? that we accumulate that we always create those unnecessary tension but it's it's true once even if it's for 
some time, a moment or a little period that one comes out of it and just ah, things go away. One wonders then, why am I keeping all this up? <laughs> why am I not just living like this all the time? <laughs> but then but then the old habits will take over and push us again in the old mechanisms. But still, these moments are very precious also in that, that uh, even if the tension comes back, then the memory is there. Uh, but it's also possible uh, without it. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I, I learned to unclench my fingers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and relax. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Do so. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Hario. 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 Hario comes and wants to participate. <laughs> it's gone again. <clears throat> All right. There is some more time. Is there anybody else who would like to come in? You're welcome. Just a string of ants decided it's the best way to go where I have my feet and we have a little different attitudes about it. So I'll try to discourage them. Let me take another way. <laughs> One aspect that uh, Yora also said, uh, she said, okay, if I have my hand full of sand, it's easy, I just open and uh, I let go, the sand falls. But how can I let go of all the other things? This physical letting go is easy. Right? But it is also physical. Simply, it's still more crystallized material. Having a handful of sand and letting the sand go, then tensions, but the tensions also become physical. They are, of course, energetic and most of the time generated with thoughts, with emotions. First, sometimes they are there first, energetic, and then they create all the thoughts and the emotions. But when the whole mechanism is on the way, the letting go seems to be more difficult. But what we most of the time are not aware is that every thought, every emotion is sending a wave of energy throughout our whole system, creating tensions or letting the tensions go, relaxing the tensions. And so even for those things that are mental, that are energetic, it is very helpful to watch the body and see when we become at all aware that tension is there. As long as we are not aware that there is at all something to let go, we cannot do anything. But when we become aware, aha, there, I'm again all tense about the situation. I'm again all tense about this person, that person, When I become aware, I can look closely. What is it doing to my experience right now? What is it doing to me energetically, physically? And then we'll become aware, along with that emotional tension, that intellectual tension, we also creating a lot of tensions in the body. 
And then it's not that much different from letting go the sand in the head. In order to let go the sand, we just have to open and relax the hand and the sand goes. And in a way, it's the same thing with the other tensions. Physically, we see how they hook into our system, what they are doing to our system, how we are getting physically also tense and relaxed as good as we can. But that very physical relaxation will lead to energetic, emotional and intellectual relaxation, at least some degree. We cannot hope that immediately all the time it's a hundred percent success, but even the attempt to do so, even if we cannot relax very much, is already changing the flavor of the situation we are dealing with. Even if we are attempting to relax without being able to relax too much, what we have been observing or thinking about, and it seemed to be big, big, big and unsurmountable, then suddenly it doesn't look so terrible anymore. I mean, I'm always talking about that because that's for me the most familiar way to go about it. One who is basically a devotee to God, he may tell instead of relaxing the body, then when you become aware of the tension, give them over to God. Just let go of the tensions by surrendering them to God in a devotional way. There are different ways to go about it. They all work. Also by discrimination. One needs own more on the jnana approach. And then in a tense situation, if you start to very sharply analyze what is real and what is unreal in the situation, that may be enough that we are capable of letting go. I'm talking about relaxing the body. I have for myself the greatest experience with that because I have been consciously start to do that and then done it again and again and seen how magnificently efficient it is. <laughs> so I come back to that all the time. It is like letting go the sand in the hand. In order to let go the sand in the hand, you just have to relax the hand. Open the hand, turn the hand around, and then it falls by itself. And it's in a way it's the same thing. If you are creating mental tensions, you are creating physical tensions, we become aware of those physical tensions, relax those physical tensions and the mental tensions, the energetic tensions and the intellectual tensions have the tendency to flow away out of the system. Like the sand that is falling when we turn the hand, when we open the hand. It's subtler, but the mechanism, basic mechanism is the same. There is something, you're holding on to it, getting all worked up about it, and then it's getting bigger and stronger and becomes a problem, and then it gets even stronger. But if we start to just turn things around by, oh no, just let go. Don't take it so serious. Relax physically, breathe. And relax again. 
then more and more you will start to really feel how that subtle tension that has been accumulating simply flows out of the system and leaves the ideas in peace. With the hand, we are more familiar. So it's easy to do so. With the subtle tensions, we are less familiar. So we have to give it a bit more attention until we become also familiar. And then it becomes as easy like letting this sand flow out of the head. <laughs> <coughs> If there is anybody who would like to say something right now, there's a little more time, we can do so. Werner. Hello, Nelly again. <laughs> I have a small question, a technical question about conscious uh, breathing, uh, how would you recommend to breathe consciously, just to feel how the air comes into the nose, how these feelings inside, how it comes and how it goes, uh, is it um, good or what would you recommend, how would hmm. you recommend? You, f you find out for yourself what is the most natural way to observe. You can just observe the air that flows into the nose. You can observe, uh, be mainly aware of the movement of the ribs, how they expand, how they, under, the ribs and the belly, how they expand, how they contract. You can, Feel this. you can be aware in your throat, and sometimes it may even help that you make a little bit that sound, that you hear the breath <laughs> in the mm. throat. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really matter how you are doing it. Uh, that which goes most naturally for you, that is the good way. And it may also a bit vary from one situation to another. Mm -hmm. If I if I feel my feelings in my belly, so I um, I can watch these physical feelings. How this belly uh, becomes bigger and then smaller. How it moves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you you mean this? Yeah. Yes, right. I mean it becomes okay. a. A whole experience. We can use one aspect to bring the attention here and then uh, anyhow, even if you focus on mainly on one aspect, you will become aware of the whole magical process that breathing is, which is much more than simply pumping air in and out of the body. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I, I see. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Werner. You're welcome. Hario. 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 So, shall we leave it at that for today? I think so. I'm going to turn off the recording now. Hario. 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 Hario.